All right, uh, welcome back to Drupal South here in Wellington. It's really, really good to be here. I'm here to talk to you today about getting the most from your CI CD experience. If you don't know, I'm Carl. I'm an ops engineer at Previous Next. I work with our ops team on our Skipper platform. We take care of, uh, well, I take care of the administration, maintenance, and development alongside the team, and I help with the hosting of Drupal websites and our other customers' applications. Today I'm going to be talking about why CI CD is important, just uh, briefly touching on some fundamentals as well as looking at how we can delineate between the responsibilities of CI pipeline from I guess the scopes they cover, the responsibilities and how we tie that into having automation and processes, what that means for users and computers like people versus um, yeah, people versus computers and uh, how much work is carried out by the pipeline. I just want to talk about how, well, some of the cool CI things that we can do. So what opportunities are there out there? There might be some considerations for your own pipelines that maybe you can think about. Um, and we'll go into that. So why is CI CD so important? Well, it comes down to three primary factors, security, consistency, and convenience. So when it comes to security, we can trust that the CI platform is going to take care of a consistent environment amongst all of the pipelines we perform. So if you're having a virtual machine, if you're having a Docker container, we can understand and know and trust that the environment is going to be consistent, whether or not we manage it or if our platform is managing it for us. When the platform is managing it, there's a, a bit of an authority there where they have a responsibility to their customers as well as themselves to make sure that their platform isn't insecure. So there is a level of trust there. We also have um, measures we can bake into our own pipeline. So if we need a certain compliance level, we need to be able to measure something, we can put that in our pipeline and we can trust and work from that opposed to stepping back and losing that later down the line. Approval workflows are another big important step part of security. So you don't want your production deploys happening without your consent or without a delegated approval. So these are options you can bake into your pipeline as well if that's your intention. Consistency is one of the bigger parts of this puzzle where we can rely on consistent tooling, processes, outputs, and our environments, of course where everyone knows how to use the platform, everyone understands that how they interact with the platform, where the logs are, where everything is. It's all very consistent. And probably the biggest point about why CI CD is important is time saving. We don't want to have to do all of these tasks again and again and wasting our time. Not that the important work isn't important, but these tasks don't have to be carried out by a person, at least not initially. Let's talk about the stages of a pipeline. We'll go into, uh, I'm going to break down the types of work CI CD can do for us and where that sits. So stages here are adoption, investment, optimization, and hardening. Where adoption is where we're obviously choosing a platform, making sure it can do what we want it to do, and the initial adoption, making sure things don't blow up in our face, making sure our code can be deployed successfully. We continue to investment where we are actively investing in work to make our application testing. Uh, and we'll go into that. Optimization is um, how we can simplify a configuration and how we can make things more efficient. And hardening obviously is putting more rigor around processes, what um, approval stages, what compliance levels, etc., can be involved. We talk about these in four different categories, so descriptive, analytical, um, what was it? prescriptive, and uh, I forget, let's move on. So the first stage is adoption. Obviously we want to make sure the platform we choose has the features we need it to. Every CI system is different, and a good example of this is GitHub Actions, whereas Enterprise only allows for workflow systems, so approval stages, whereas if you don't have the enterprise, you don't have that feature. 
And if you go to a platform such as Circle CI, this is an option for you straight out of the box. These are some considerations for platform choice. But um, at the end of the day, adopting CI is a significant helper to anyone. So having your foot in the door is the most important thing. But this is a long-term engagement for you. Investing is basically the stage we look at where we are making better code. Using the tools in place, writing tests to make sure our applications specific to our needs or our customers uh, are doing exactly what they need to and not more than they don't. Optimization is, um, comes into being able to predict your outputs from given inputs. This can be fuzz testing, this can be form sanitization. These are standard Drupal things. It's still a very good practice to have a system in play where you can predict what you're going to get from certain inputs. Front-end tests are a really good example of this, which can be done on CI. And you can produce a test, testing your front-end, making sure everything is in place for when the final deployment happens. Maybe you have a stakeholder which needs a certain button, a certain color. These are the sets things you can do. Image comparison tests have been very useful for us at Previous Next. We have a couple of customers who uh, we go through each feature request, making sure that we're testing a, a browser size and um, making sure that the differences in pages are not significant enough or they are expected. And hardening is uh, scanning, compliance, approval stages, all of the important things that put rigor into our systems but they make them last a lot longer and they give some sort of sense of security to people who are involved in the process. Looking at a complexity in the decision making graph, it's, it shows a lot of interesting things in this regard where we can see the human input is really high when you start out and when you, you don't really have anything telling your system how it should be acting or what it should be doing, whereas that scales up and the human factor really does vanish. Let's talk about some cool things that can be done in CI. Reusable code is uh, probably the most significant innovation in the past few years. Uh, GitHub Actions, Circle CI Orbs. These are declarative pieces of information where you can include it in your pipeline configuration and scale it out. Uh, Actions, Circle CI and GitHub, uh, GitLab allow you to uh, produce something. You can parameterize it, make it as configurable as you need to. You don't even have to maintain this piece of code if you want. And you can scale that out to as many sites as you are maintaining. You may have two, 300 websites. You can reliably manage this information in one place, make it configurable, and even use version tagging to prevent any unwanted changes from upstream. GitHub Actions have their actions as part of their platform. We'll look into that in a sec. I've got a example from a personal repository, which um, shows really the real importance of having CI in place. I made a bit of a misstep a few years ago in not including automation, but it serves as an important lesson. Circle CI is something we use quite a bit at Previous Next, and we maintain a couple of orbs ourselves. I want to talk to you about, uh, go into the code of that, what it looks like, and um, we'll go from there. And GitLab, I have a very small example. I don't use a lot of it these days, but um, it's been used in the past by myself. Before we start on this part, uh, GitHub Actions went public in 2019. It wasn't long before Hobart, so that'll tie into my example in a moment. Circus uh, Obs. Uh, same deal, have been around since 2018, GitLab 2012. You have other systems out there, such as Jenkins, which have been doing the same sort of thing on dedicated hardware for a much longer time. So it's just an evolving concept that has been materialized. Our GitHub Actions example, uh, it's a bit of a personal project I had maintained before the pandemic. Uh, obviously, I didn't have any automation in this project initially. And I wanted to talk about that a bit. Our configuration here just shows us what an action declaration looks like. It's a circle uh, GitHub workflow. So my example, it's a personal project. There was no automation and it died during the pandemic. 
but I did bring it back and I wanted to look at some lessons in that. So looking at the Git history and the project at the time, um, I was maintaining upstream changes from some repositories. I was also making my own changes, hosting the application on a branch and obviously having a default branch. That became very convoluted very quickly and I, I guess I didn't foresee this happening. I didn't spend a lot of attention on this project. Coming back to it in 2023, I have done a couple of things of note. One is our workload here. We're simply downloading uh, Hugo, which is a static file, uh, static website generator, building it and deploying it. So this process will take half a minute. I'll show you a screenshot in a sec. Um, but the other thing of note is using Git submodules. So uh, fi fixing a couple of failures on my part, and as a result, uh, technical debt is gone completely. Circles through our orbs, much the same deal. Here's a configuration where we can see how that would look. And um, we're gonna look into a s deployment um, scheduler in Circle CI here. So here's our configuration. We're coming in, we're packaging an application, making sure that we can deploy it and just deploying it afterwards. Of note here, we have our environment parameters and our version parameter. And we pass that through to the circle CI orb. And that just comes through, prints the version and deploys the application using Docker. This actually allows us to use this orb in any system which supports Docker which is a important factor because if you use a Docker executor, you may not have access to Docker at that time. So these, these are some of the considerations when you design one of these re pieces of reusable code. Similarly in GitLab, you have this uh, include system where you can include any supported schema file, uh, URL, local, and as long as GitLab or the pipeline has access to pull that information in, you can include that information. Looking at uh, persisting data. So this is a rather interesting idea I've done a lot of work on recently. I've had to learn a bit too. But uh, we're going to talk about cache, workspaces and artifacts. Now, caching in a pipeline allows us to refer to a, a string that's associated to our checksum of our dependency file to pull in changes so that if we have to rerun a pipeline, if we have to have a parallel pipeline, we only have to do the process once and only when that file changes. It's a very convenient system of saving time and making sure that we are really nailing down on what we need from our pipeline. A workspace works very similar to caches but it allows us to completely isolate the environments between a build, test, and deploy. So we, we can determine that the stages are completely isolated. So here we simply have our composer installation task, and we are saving our dependencies to the workspace. And this workspace is attachable to any stage in a pipeline vertically. We'll have a look at a diagram in a sec to go into that. Similarly, if you have it saved to your workspace, you can attach to your workspace using something like this, where you're attaching it to the project or the pipeline step, and then you're testing your application completely independently of your build steps. Artifacts allow us to download information after a build has finished. This is likely in the form of test results. CircleCI has this uh, concept where it will uh, save the artifacts, go through your test results, it'll be able to identify any failures, and it will show you, or it will be able to make use of those times um, in a later item I'll show you. Here's how the three concepts sort of intertwine. You've got your artifacts down the bottom. After your pipeline's finished, they can be made available. Uh, Running parallel, we can see our caches are, we can use those between. And running vertically down, we have our workspaces which do isolate each stage of the process. Scheduling tasks, it's a somewhat boring subject, but it has a lot of opportunity for us. So here we are simply looking at a, a system cron. Here's an example. I did a blog post recently on this, if you're interested. 
what we're doing here is we are triggering a, a, penetra uh, a penetration test. We're doing we do this weekly, and we are basically having up-to-date information on our application. And you can see from the pipeline, it's uh, composer up, and uh, it's going to be testing the application while it's running in CI. What this looks like in a cron system is just a trigger. Very simple stuff, but it's food for thought. What we can do with this, if there's anything out of cycle that we need to take care of, uh, be it testing, build, or even deployments, and anything else on the screen you can see, uh, these things can be supported by your platform, but they don't have to be. What this does, it gives you the power to do this yourself regardless of what system you're on. And it's worth considering if you haven't thought about it before. If you look at uh, how environments can be used, it's actually quite interesting in CI. We do a lot of things. We do deployments. We do synchronization. Uh, here, for example, we are taking a backup and restoring our production database to our development environment. What this helps us do is it prevents the environment from going stale. Uh, we do have some sanitization work here, so we can elect to remove web form information to remove caches to really nail down what is supposed to be in our development environment. And from there, we, we can deploy. This may not be a suitable approach for everyone. Environments are used for different things. There are content, there are other, uh, other environments used for interesting things, but it does become a problem after a time where an environment does get stale and testing features can be annoying, to say the least. You can also have purpose-built environments. So if you need to hand an environment off to a non-technical person for an approval, if you need to test a certain feature using a web front end, or if you wanted to test the environment within CI, having a purpose-built environment can be very beneficial. This is also a sophisticated feature. Not every hosting provider allows for this, such a feature, but it's worth having the conversation and going from there. Canaries are an excellent way to test out features or test out major upgrades ahead of time. We recently had a Drupal 10 upgrade for a larger client of ours. Using this approach, we could go through and eliminate each stage of the process of what is preventing us from making this upgrade. It was uh, very successful, and I'm very proud of the team for being able to go through this. But I've used this uh, in the past as well. It's a very effective way of rolling out significant changes without breaking anything. Parallelism, uh, parallelism is one of our last ones. And um, here we are simply trying to run multiple pipelines at the same time associated with the same process and split the, the workloads out. We can do this in CircleCI uh, by just declaring parallelism. And this will start another machine operating the same load. And what we're going to do in that load is split it apart. So using the circle CI daemon I talked about before, we're going to use our test timings and distribute that workload between each of the executors. And what this does is it saves us time and potentially money associated to the running of those. Using GitHub Actions, I couldn't find anything quite as similar. But if you are aware of your workloads, if you have done some work around how much tests are taking and where should they go, you are able to distribute the, the workloads between each executor or runner. And uh, GitLab also supports this, and it supports matrices as well. So if you need to test against multiple versions of PHP, as an example, uh, these are options for you. Uh, in conclusion, I was hoping today to try and inspire people to think about opportunities they may have not thought about in uh, CI. A couple of examples here really took me by surprise and I've been really utilizing them at work. So I hope you've taken something from this. Uh, as for resources, there's no better opportunity than to get started. So if you need to, uh, I would refer you to the documentation uh, associated with the platform. Here are the CircleCI and GitHub Action stocks. I've also got a blog link 
to that blog post I mentioned about integrating Stackhawk and dynamic application security testing with Circle CI. Um, thank you. Have you any questions? So using a makefile instead of the CI. That, what the makefile allows you to do is also run it locally. Uh, having a, a binary to try and run uh, CI workloads locally, it's not uh, completely transparent between the systems. Uh, there is a project called ACT which basically imitates GitHub Actions. It's great, it's uh, expensive in data, and it's not 100% reliable. It's not like for like. Make allows you to break the tasks apart, declare them in the same way, you're not changing any code, and um, basically having a consistent experience. That's a problem I don't have a solution for, and it's something I've had many, many times, uh, both before previous next and now. We, we try to invest as much, all we can into the CI and go from there. The investment usually pays off longer term, but it does take an initial investment. So I'm sorry, I don't have a solution to that one. I wish I did. Yeah, that's an interesting one. So for debugging, CircleCI does have a feature where you can start it with an SSH client. So if you need to run specific commands, need to understand the system a bit more, or there's a way for you to grab secrets from there actually, which is not ideal, but if you need to make a comparison and find that information, it is an option for you, and it can help. Canary is, is just taking a branch from your default branch, making a, a change you know it's going to break, something you want, obviously. It might be a solar upgrade, a Drupal 10 upgrade, running the pipeline and seeing exactly where that breaks. We had a client where we contributed back a lot of core changes because we needed to get those upstream. So those changes went through. We made the appropriate module updates. And even if modules needed to be updated, like contributed to, to make that happen. It's a process of taking each time it breaks removing the barriers in which it breaks to get the successful result. What I would suggest is something um, which I used to do a lot more of. It's making sure that you review all of the code that's in your pipeline. You don't want to be uh, caught unawares. So you need to sort of establish a, a bit of trust with the actions you're using. And so review the code, make sure it's doing what you expect it to. And if it's not, find a different solution. Uh, if you have a custom binary, if you if you need to run something that you made, it may be worthwhile doing your own, like we do. So we can uh, we know that we trust it, we maintain it, and it works well for us. I must admit that incident I was in hospital at the time. I don't have a lot of opinions on it. Uh, I, I don't have any specific opinions. I wasn't involved with the remediation. But um, yeah, maybe I should look into that more. All right, thank you for your time.